So the discussion we're going to have now is about geometric construction. Geometric construction is based on pure geometry, and by pure geometry we're talking about the science of describing shapes. So if you had a really bad experience in high school math with a class called geometry, please don't fear. We're not going to do any of that. Geometric construction is not new. Babylonian astronomers use geometric construction to plot positions of stars to predict the orbit of Jupiter and its movement through the sky. Uh, this tablet contains a list of geometric formulas and calculations in cuneiform. Even in ancient Egypt, uh, the principles of geometric construction were fairly well understood. Uh, farmers wanted to know how big their land was, and the Egyptians figured out that if you took a rope with 12 knots evenly spaced along the periphery, that you could use that to lay out 90 degree angles by stretching the rope and then laying out the corners of your fields. Throughout history we see a lot of things that maybe we at one time would have thought were artistic are actually precisely constructed with geometric construction. For example we see this arch here and it's obviously not a half circle. Uh, it's very interesting elliptical shape and uh, looking at the drawing we see how the different radii and foci were set up to create that particular arch. Many of us have seen Greek columns like these, ionic columns, where they have the little curly cue at the top. And again, we might think, well, it's artistic, right? It's There's nothing geometric behind it, really. Someone sculpted that. Well, actually, it's a very precise formula of geometric construction and layout of receding circles in a spiral that produces that particular pattern. Euclid was one of the guys that came up and wrote down a whole bunch of precepts about geometry and geometric construction. He was also the author of a 13 volume series of books that laid out the principles of Euclidean geometry and geometric construction. So we could ask why didn't this guy just use a ruler when he had to create triangles and shapes. And, uh, basically it was because the Greeks couldn't do the kind of math that we do because they didn't have any way of taking a whole number and breaking it into smaller parts. There are no decimals or fractions in Roman numerals, right? We've all seen the Roman numerals. Well, there's no decimal there. There's no negative numbers. There's not even a zero. So because they couldn't do the arithmetic to come to the answer, what was necessary was draw the answers out. And that's what they found you could do. You could solve mathematical problems graphically. Now, the Greeks did it mainly out of an interest in curiosity about mathematics. They wanted to see how these rules and laws of mathematics worked. Uh, and so they totally delved into this science of geometry uh, with the goal of just expanding their knowledge. Honestly, didn't really put a lot of thought into whether or not there were any practical applications for this stuff. Uh, but of course there are. And uh, while it is cool to know how to make a perfectly heart-shaped cake, there are some more serious applications for geometric construction. We see things like gear teeth, and uh, gear teeth are not beveled. Uh, they've got a special kind of curve on them, and that curve is an involute curve, and it's created in a very specific way in order to maximize the engagement between gears. This requires geometric construction to create that perfect curve, and there is that involute curve right there. Uh, the path that a spiral takes as it winds down a shaft, like on a screw thread or in a barbershop pole. Well, again, this can be graphically laid out using geometric construction. So to be able to do these kinds of projects and to draw these kinds of things and to solve these problems graphically, we have to be familiar with the terms of geometry. So I'm not going to read these to you because obviously you can read and you don't need me to do it. Uh, but you should be familiar with what points are, right? And we can draw points using either a pencil or we can draw points in a CAD system. Uh, lines, really a series of points um, or something with length that has no width. Um, we're drawing horizontal and vertical and inclined lines in the sketching part of this class. We know sometimes lines are parallel, and there's a symbol that tells you if lines are parallel, and there's a symbol that tells you if lines are at 90 degrees to each other or perpendicular. And then sometimes lines are curved. Uh, sometimes that curve is a free curve, like a spline, and other times it's a circular curve, like that arc. So we've talked about 
points in the line. And then we can talk about planes. Uh, planes are flat two-dimensional surfaces defined by three points in space. So where those three points are congruous, well, that would be the definition of a plane. And planes create surfaces, and surfaces can be used to form 3D geometry, like these platonic solids. And of course, these shapes can also be developed geometrically to be able to unfold them and then to fabricate them out of, let's say, thin material like metal or cardboard. There's some nice stuff on angles here. The symbol for angles is important. Uh, we all know how many degrees are in a circle. Uh, and maybe you didn't know this one. We all know that degrees can be divided into decimal degrees. But you know there's a system for dividing degrees up where there are 60 minutes in one degree. And then each minute can be divided up into 60 seconds. So if you're keeping score from home, that's 60 seconds to a minute, and 60 minutes to a degree, and 360 degrees in a circle, giving us a total of 1,296,000 different divisions within a circle. And then, of course, there's radians for dividing degrees up to angles up. Uh, here's a little snapshot of a variety of angles. Uh, the ones that we should be most concerned about are right angles, knowing that 90 degree corners are easy to fabricate and to build things out of. Uh, when we say acute and obtuse, we should know what those are too. Triangles, three lines, interior angles sum to 180. Here's a variety of triangles. Here's a number of quadrilaterals where we have four sides, and sometimes those sides are parallel to the opposite side, so they are parallelograms. And then a polygon could be any shape, any shape bounded by straight lines. Um, and if the polygon has perfectly matched angles and side length, well, then it's a regular polygon. And just when you were thinking that this was going to be dry and boring and there was absolutely no humor or fun we could possibly have with this discussion on geometric construction, bam, look at that one, huh? That's a knee slapper. Aura, gone, get it? Okay, let's move on. Uh, circles and arcs. Circles can be defined with a number of different conditions and dimensions. Uh, tangency relates to how a line intersects with the curve of a circle. Concentric is the idea that circles and arcs share a common center point. Eccentric would be that they do not share a common center point. And again, this isn't all dry and without any fun at all. I mean, here we got a geometry joke. Look at that, huh? When we're able to perform geometric construction, we're able to do some cool stuff. And I'm going to show you how to do that cool stuff. It's going to involve some of your drawing tools. And it has a big payoff for you if you intend on working in a field where fabrication, construction, uh, design, or CAD are involved. Basically, you become a magician who has some awesomely cool tricks up his sleeve. So geometric construction is magic without the awkwardness. The uh, applications, like I said, they're, they're widespread. In the surveying, we use geometric construction. In map making, we use it in construction. And in structural engineering, it's used. Uh, in astronomy, it is used. Design, fabrication, and then I've laid out things geometrically on job sites uh, where it was necessary to demonstrate or show on site in full size what things were going to look like, like a set of stairs. And you can do that with geometric construction techniques, um, structural engineering. And then one of my faves is the, uh, the layout of 3D shapes back into 2D. Uh, there are a lot of smart people on this campus and many campuses in the math department, but uh, I challenge you to find somebody who can do this, where you have to take a 3D form and reduce something like this square to round into its 2D components. This is high level geometry and not many people have this skill, but it would be incredibly valuable to somebody working in an industry like sheet metal or like the packaging industry. And then even for art, believe it or not, uh, 
huge application for geometric construction. We see here a pattern, and this is an Islamic geometric pattern. Well, it is broken down into very simple pieces that grow exponentially into a larger design. The big payoff for you would be understanding that 2D CAD and 3D CAD both rely on an understanding of geometric construction. CAD is not about knowing what the buttons do when you pick on them or click on them. CAD is knowing how to use the tools to create figures for technical drawings. So if you understand geometric construction, you will have a much better understanding of how the CAD tools work. The payoff for you is that CAD will be easier to do. Working with those tools will be not as tough. Uh, you'll also be more proficient with those tools. So this is what I want to dangle before you, the importance of geometric construction. It will pay off later on big time if we have anything to do with the field of computer-aided drafting and design. Uh, these shapes here, these are some simple 2D shapes. I'm looking at the light blue outlines. Uh, you should be able to, with some experience in geometric construction, you should be able to look at those shapes and very quickly figure out how you would construct them. Now, historically, for students that can do this, it's because they do very well with geometric construction. And look, not everyone starts off doing very well. If we're not doing well, we have to just work at it. That's all. But if we just write this off and say, what a waste of time, uh, it's going to come back to bite you in the tail later on when you've got to create machine parts like these that have these geometric relationships between lines and curves and arcs and you'll be stumped on how to make them if you haven't really given a lot of thought to this unit of instruction and then forget about it if we can't do the 2d stuff there is no way we're going to be able to go into 3d modeling where complex geometric forms need to be created if we just write off geometric construction as an absolute waste of time and not worth the effort. Maybe one of my favorite reasons though, at least recently, for why we need to focus on geometric construction as part of a well-rounded mechanical drawing education is a quote from Random Internet Stranger that I found just recently and it says, students need an appreciation for exactness before motivating any sort of mathematical or geometric rigor is even possible. So you can't really appreciate the need to be precise unless you see how these geometric constructions work out. Sometimes forget mathematics is a precise science. And a lot of times for us, we guesstimate and it's a fuzzy thing. Geometric construction will show you how unfailingly accurate and precise and repeatable it is every single time. And that will carry over because CAD requires someone to be precise and accurate and reliable every time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through making a series of geometric instructions. And I've got some printed out instructions that go step by step on how to do these things. Uh, we have video also that instructs you on how to do these things. And what I like to do is I like to do them with you. So my suggestion would be, let's take out the materials in the class pack at the back that involve making geometric constructions. You can watch the video through each problem. Starting on page 211 in the class pack, we have some information about geometric construction and the techniques that are required in order to be able to pull it off successfully. And then on 212, we have this series of instructions on how to complete those constructions if you don't have access to the video for some reason. So three or four steps generally, nice and concise, works you through the problem and shows you how to complete it. For some people this is easier than watching me on a video or for some people this is helpful after they've watched the video to see it from another point of view. Now these are not the only geometric constructions there are. These are some that I thought would be helpful for the kind of work we're going to do in this class. So understand that uh, I skipped a bunch of the simpler geometric constructions. There were several that I decided we weren't going to spend time with. Uh, and then I also skipped the ones that are exceptionally rigorous, ones that require a lot of work and could be very tricky. 
So at the very end on 2-20, you'll see some additional geometric constructions, and I've illustrated some of them here. Um, down the bottom, I've also named several of them, and I'm showing you that because you have the option, if you'd like to, to continue and develop your geometric construction skills. And for my classes, this is going to count as extra credit. So after we've completed drawings 2.3 through 2.7, if you are enjoying geometric construction, you have the opportunity to do a little bit more for extra credit. So get some blank paper and show me how to make a golden rectangle or the golden spiral. And along the way, you'll probably learn why they're called that. Uh, setting up an ellipse using a compass. You see compasses draw circles, but you can also draw an ellipse using a compass. And geometric instruction will illustrate how to do that. Making a perfect pentagram using compass and straight edge. No protractors, no rulers, nothing else. Geometric instruction will help you lay that out. Uh, spiral of Archimedes is another geometric construction. Uh, connecting two parallel lines with an OG curve is another geometric construction. And, you know, if you're not designing wrenches, <laughs> it's not the only application. You think about roads that have a curve and then a reverse curve. Well, this is how surveyors and land developers and civil engineers lay out those sorts of things. Uh, here we see two circles uh, with tangent arcs joining the two of them. So laying out tangent arcs against other arcs, or laying out a series of tangent arcs, one after the other. Uh, setting up a spiral using projection and geometric construction. Uh, making a parabola using geometric construction. An involute curve, a cycloid, or a, a hypocycloid. Uh, any of these figures would show that you've applied yourself a little bit beyond what was required for the class, and for my classes at least, I'm happy to give you some extra credit for the extra effort you do.